galactic civil war spreads across the sun. From the height of Coruscant to fiery Mustafa. To fight the evil empire, four people join the fray. These are the heroes of the Hydean Way. The galaxy is suffering through a period of civil war as the Galactic Empire attempts to stamp out the Rebellion. Though the Rebellion destroyed the Death Star, the Empire's power is not to be denied, and the Rebellion is on the run. While generals and politicians organize matters back at base, there are always teams out gathering information, and this team is about to stumble onto something big. Very big. Join the team as they pick up the trail. In Episode 2, Many Bothans Make Light Work. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Fantasy Flight Games' Age of Rebellion system. This is episode two of our Secretive Adventures with Bossons. And I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure, and I'm using they-them pronouns. And I am Leslie, and I use she-her pronouns. I am playing Teeth. I'm Michael, using he-him pronouns, and I am playing Dusk. Say, uh... Hi, I'm Zach. I'm playing Kurt Russell the Slicer. Oh, I use he, him pronouns. And I'm David. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Bird Loxy. Are we retaining the same destiny pool? Oh, yeah. By the way, our destiny pool is two light side and three dark side. The camera starts off in pretty close to total darkness. There's just a pinprick of light with an irregular shape around it. And as the uh, camera moves closer and closer, you can see these four Bothans in these dark, what look to be ponchos, with a silvery U-shape logo on the back of each of them. The camera weaves around the different heads of our heroes and goes through this open door showing off a vast underground cavern. Down the center of this cavern, you see spouts that are feeding magma into magnetic field tubes that go into turbines close to the floor that are spinning and creating power. Then, as the camera pans to the left, there is at least three levels of pallets of ingots that are side by side by side, of this dark, highly refined metal. As it goes further from the camera's point of view, you can see the color of the metals changing, first to a gold, then to a gleaming silver, then to something that seems to be more shiny than chrome. The camera pans back over to the right. There, standing three stories tall, is one large crystal that is in a magnetic binding projector so it's sitting at least five feet off of the ground and away from the ceiling it looks to have been polished and the amount of facets on this are almost mind-boggling it's sitting there a darkened green you can't see through but it looks like this Three-story tall jade crystal. Wow. Is this something that was revealed as we walked further into the room? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Whoa. Well, I uh, wasn't expecting to see that on the tour. We probably shouldn't blow this up. No. No, we shouldn't. Teeth is going to wander further into the room kind of scouting out the lay of the land, looking for exits for people, exits and entrances for vehicles, maybe a couple of metal samples or sampling racks just to kind of get a feel for what's on display. Kind of just scoping the place out, making sure there's no guards kind of thing. 
the four of you are coming out through a service door that is on essentially a blank wall. There is just below you a large hangar door. As spotless as this place looks, you can still see that this door hasn't been open for years. And just above is the big sign saying 63 days since last injury. (laughs) This catwalk is pretty much the only landmark on this entire wall, which connects both sides. One goes to your left is the metals and alloy pallets. And to the right, there seems to be a bunch of people. You do see most are... Celestins and coveralls, but you do see a smattering of other species. And you do see a small stormtrooper presence, mostly roving pairs, with a higher concentration over towards the giant crystal. I think it might be time to shut the ponchos and go with the stealth suits for our boosts. I was about to say, uh, Teeth's going to cut back to the group and be like, all right, we're super not alone. And uh, there's some uh, bucket heads over there. Are there any, uh, like, computer panels, terminals around? Anything anything at all, really? I mean, there's a door panel right where you came in, and I'm going to go with, at the exact midpoint of this catwalk, there <laughs> is a small computer station that looks out over the production floor. And it even has a small microphone to it that looks kind of like where people are doing the company positivity speeches from (laughs) it also does look like it has a real computer terminal as well would this be something that would possibly like have remote connection to like lifting droids maybe Uh, I'm pretty sure that that it could get onto the same circuits as lifting droids yes okay I mean not normally uh hey uh if we can get to that terminal Without getting uh, spotted, I might have a plan. And he slinks towards the terminal. <laughs> um, you want to ditch the shiny? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Take oh, off the, the uniform. The poncho, Sorry. yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. These Thanks. stealth suits probably wouldn't do much good with this hollow suit on. Uh, Dusk will ditch his poncho and then also take off the the protective force field. Uh, force field I use in quotes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, I powered that up. I'm going to fold the poncho and try to put fit it into my backpack. Never know when you need a poncho. It may be easier for us to move around if we can find some of those uh, coveralls of our own. On well, it. Either way, we got to get across that bridge. What do the coveralls look like, Ben? Like, are they black, brown, green, purple, blue? They are gray with the top of the shoulders being black. Not quite epaulets, just actually quilted top of the shoulders. Is there a way to get to the workers without crossing the catwalk? Like, can I go down and around, or...? The catwalk itself, I am going to go with the, yes, there is a ladder that goes down but it's an exposed ladder it does this being the empire they don't even have a proper fault cage around the ladder but the catwalk does have railings that must have preceded the empire's presence then well this is where important people walk so oh, important people <laughs> humans not just humans important humans mm, even worse do you guys want to hang back and I'll go get us some suits, or do we want to just try and kind of move? It would be good to have a little bit more freedom of movement, I think. Yeah, nothing like, nothing like a good disguise. Again, I I, I think the, the coveralls are probably our best bet. All right. Y'all want to hang here? I'll be right back. Because what Teeth does is he gets things from point A to point B. <laughs> Ideally... With as little fuss as possible. <laughs> and as Teeth walks away, Dosk looks at the group and says, Alright, everyone, just uh, look busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. I pull out my data pad and pretend like I'm clipboarding. <laughs> Dosk appears to be counting uh, 
the the number of uh, ingots on the pallet. <laughs> I think I'm going to deal with teeth first. So you are running off to get some of the coveralls? I like to think that I'm skulking, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're skulking off to go get some coveralls. So in that case... I am thinking that... And we're skulking, and we're skulking. Do you hear the music, like, cronk? Uh, no, I do it proper. <laughs> I think in this case, I am going to go with the stormtroopers actually trying to do the perception check, just so that I'm not having to do the um, inversion of talents that usually have to happen. So they're going to be rolling the wonderful and constant two green dice doesn't matter how many stormtrooper groups there are or how many stormtroopers in the group they still have two green going up against teeth i'm thinking stealth but i also think there might be a talent that gets applied well i am indistinguishable <laughs> and i'm wearing um, a work worn outfit because I've, I've ditched the poncho, so I'm now wearing that blue kind of tired peacoat kind of thing. And sl not slacks, but, you know, workers' trousers and a, like a, a shirt or a sweater underneath it. So I, I look like I should be at a dock somewhere in a generic sense. So I look like a worker. Okay. Uh, and there are other species here. Not just Celestins, not just Humies. It's it's all of us, kind of a mix. So, like I said, I am indistinguishable. Mm hmm. One might even say that you are doubly indistinguishable. Yeah, I have. Uh, I've I've made some improvements, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Which consequently sure. means we could actually all go together because I can affect three people. <laughs> Aside from myself. But uh, we'll oh, use that okay. momentarily once I get us dressed. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> so many okay. red. Ow. Yikes. So I hate you too, Dice. <laughs> wildly enough, rolling two green, four red, and a purple because of different upgrades. Also, Teeth is just silly capable at stealth. And the cell suit and all that. But the roll became three success and six threat. Do keep in mind that this is the stormtroopers attempting to see teeth. They have seen teeth. They know exactly where teeth is. Are what have you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've been successfully picked out of a crowd. Yes, you have been picked out of a crowd by two stormtroopers that are coming over to you. And it's like, you, worker, what are you doing over there? You know staff are supposed to be in the public address area. What section have you been assigned to? Um, gonna look around, grab a number and a letter off the wall. Oh, well, what are you doing over here then? That's way over and points at you. I mean, you do have six threat on this, so you can do a lot of... Um distracting? Are or... there terminals over where the workers are? Uh, yes, there are. Okay. So I'm going to have, if you're okay with this, I'm going to have lifted a tool, like a, a hydro spanner or something hand size, okay. and just do a quick flip of it and, and say that uh, this baby, this baby got out of hand. I was working on a tough nut and it just flew and I had to go get it and you would not believe it went under the skids all the way back to the wall and I had to go up and over and around to get to where I needed to be and oh and I barely fit you see how I'm not wearing my coveralls I'm not wearing my coveralls because they're stuck behind the skids and he's just going to unleash a torrent of gibberish in their direction and all the while uh, be trying to signal for the others to take advantage of their distraction. To which I think the camera would then swing up to look at the other three who are still on the catwalk over 
towards somewhere between the middle of the public address node and the uh, ingot. Just real quick, I think um, the the hydro spanner is nice and shiny, so uh, Teeth is doing a lot of flicking it, like pointing and pointing, <laughs> really just kind of drawing their eye with it because it keeps glinting in the um, the myriad of reflective lights coming from all of the various like safety lights, magma lighting, all sorts of stuff. Ah, Criff, we gotta help out. Hey, uh, watch, watch my back. I was gonna say, Dusk was going to, um, while you're, uh, so whatever, uh, whatever Kurt is doing, <laughs> Dusk is looking up from his count from the pallet, and he's like flashing hand signals <laughs> <laughs> over to over to Teeth. Yeah, and I'll make my way to the terminal. Are you telling Teeth to keep like stretching it, or so the the hand signals appear to be like a uh, count, like uh, like you catch like there's like he's holding up uh, two full palms. So I guess I think Bothans have four fingers. I believe like so. Three fingers and a thumb. Okay. Sure. So enough fingers. Yeah, yeah, enough fingers, and then there's a yell. Uh, looks like we're too short on this one, boss. All right. I'd like to make a deception check. Okay, absolutely. Does he get any boost for those, uh, any any of those threat? One or two? Yeah, I would go with that. Sadly, deception is going up against one of the skills that they would have. <laughs> uh, Discipline. Which means it would be, yeah, which would be one red and two purple. But yeah, you're definitely getting uh, two boosts. I'm just looking over my skills real quick to make sure I don't have something, or my uh, my specializations, to make sure I don't have something that would help with this. Da -da -da. Deception is coming. Most of my checks revolve around charm and not deception, so I don't really have any other extra bonuses. Let's see what the dice say. <laughs> <laughs> Go oh, five successes, one advantage. <laughs> the dice Apparently, uh, Dosk throws on a quite a convincing, like, Doc worker's accent. And maybe Dosk looks a little bit like a Botham that they've seen um, in the in the production bays before. Yeah, I'm going to use this opportunity while they're uh, kind of torn between these two individuals. I'm going to try to get myself into the computer terminal. I'm going to see if I can get any lifting bots to start dumping pallets into the lava <laughs> to see if uh, we can draw enough attention away from all of us to kind of just move on through. I think you should just join the workers. No? <laughs> Come. Well, I, I, I'm just just watching this all just get set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust the dice. D1 fair. has taught me not to trust the dice. No, do what you want. Actually, hold on real quick. Mr. David. Yes. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bird is probably trying to back up Dosk in some way, but subtly. Oh my gosh. Our I've got my, my data pad. If we can if, pretend like I, I'm keeping I'll, the tally while they're doing say, this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we're having our own little like who's on first routine in the background with the yeah. data pad. <laughs> we're we're going to have to check outputs 5 and 7B. No, no. 7B. 7B shut down for maintenance. It's 7C. 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 I got 300 foot of cable here. <laughs> I don't know. There's a there's a Ghostbusters quote for yes. this, and I can't remember. One of the one of the one of the lines is running short. We get, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to check the lines. Hey, inventory short. We're not gonna have the parts for this. We're gonna have to requisition some work. Ah, just lose it off the back of a speeder, boss. We need you over here. You got to make some decisions. We can't do that. We're two lowly employees. Um, uh, am am I being summoned? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, I'm being summoned. With the amount of successes <laughs> that have been rolled on this, the stormtroopers are absolutely all right. All right. All right. I, okay. I know you guys are suspicious, and you know I was not in my place, but those need something. So I'm I'm going that way. Uh, do you, Do you want to come with me? It's It's all very exciting. We're counting. The two stormtroopers are going to uh, do a quick look at each other, shrug at each other, and. No. Go on. Make sure that you get into your coveralls and find your ID. At least get a replacement. If your chain code isn't up by the end of the shift, 
You're not going to get paid for today's uh, show. Ooh, ooh, don't. You oh, know that, how that it hurts. Is. That hurts. That. You have to use your chain code yep. to get out. Yep. All right. It, it's the rules. You know it. Yep. I do know those rules. He nods very seriously and flashes a massive grin. And then he goes over to a rack <laughs> of coveralls, uh, makes a show of looking for the right size, and when they turn away, grabs a stack of four. <laughs> All right. And hustles totally back. Works. All right. So, yes, you get back to the rest. Uh, and if we want to get paid for work today, we've got to get replacement chain codes. Ooh, we're getting paid? I can make those. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm up for making a few credits while we do this. That's fine. On the Empire's dime, certainly. Would it would it be like would it be like What's on the dime? Empire's chit or something? <laughs> <It's a dime. laughs> they don't yeah. have dimes, do they? They're a very rare species, uh, native to Celeste only. Teeth's gonna run over, and as he gets close, he chucks everybody a suit and climbs into his. So, okay, so they're buying the yelling thing. So what if we have a conversation while our friend here does his, and he minds typing, but he minds typing like hunt and peck, not like actual <laughs> typing. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do this. I mean, we can certainly do the old fashioned walk and talk. Yeah, but we're going to have to stop part way. But we need to upload the data. But it would get Kurt closer to the terminal, yes? Yeah, yeah. Um, is there like a command hut? It can be. Okay. I think there's a command hut, and we need to upload the data there. That would be perfect. It would get us at least some privacy from the stormtroopers. And I mean, that's official, right? Yeah, as long as I keep carrying this, uh, this data pad. You clipboard it up. <laughs> I'm just looking around, pointing at something, and then pointing at my data pad, and then nodding, or shaking my head, and then, like, pretending to say something to them and just keep walking. I'm figuring there's a processed lava tube, where lava tube, it's a circular cave, for lack of a better description. Mm -hmm. What they've done is taken a boring machine to it, and then just smoothed out the edges and turned it into just a proper tunnel. Oh, see. On the far side. Okay. I guess that is how you make something boring, is you make it smooth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. And right <laughs> next to where all of the repulsor carts go, you see a small foreman's office. It's this little modular thing. It has a roof and everything, but it is, it's an office in the middle of a work floor. They don't make sense, but they also make a huge amount of sense. Yeah, it's like a construction, like something that's temporary. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. On the inside, it looks like a proper office. On the outside, it's just walls and glass windows. A bastion of management. <laughs> exactly. When you don't need an entire office floor, you just need an office on the middle of a work floor. Do we want our demolitionist or whatever MDP decided on actually being? <laughs> Do we want him to maybe lay some charges here and there to make distractions? Y'all didn't want to blow stuff up before and now we're <laughs> blowing stuff up! <laughs> it depends on what we want to do. I have several different bombs for several different situations. <laughs> um, if we're looking for... Well, actually, I can also make one from parts once per session, so that might Ooh. actually be the best option. Oh, improvise. Not have to unpack everything. We could make it look like an industrial accident. Yeah. So if we can find a place away from where we actually want to go that I can get to stealthily, I can hopefully, if I roll well enough, <laughs> rig something to go off over there. And it could potentially get quite big. Okay, I might have something. All right, well, if we get into this management booth, we can probably yep. access the system. But the tab there's Tabana gas across the wall over there. Maybe, uh, maybe distraction? Yeah, if you can get me over there, I think I, uh, I've got a couple ideas for ways we can make this work. I can make it look like an accident. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, blowing our cover. Maybe I can get the lights off first. Uh, that would work. I can do it in the dark. 
Now that <laughs> that so worries wrong. me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Dusk's eyes go a little bit wide, and he says nothing. <laughs> what is it you called it? Let's uh, walk and talk. Yes, yeah, so a walk and talk. So, so like I was saying, boss, uh, you know, we're, we're short on that line. It looks like it could be those two production modules. I, I think. Yeah, and I whose think... fault is it that we're short on those two lines? That, that is that was assigned to you. You need to give me a reason, uh, and you need well, to give I, me. No, no, I mean it's likely hardware. We will have to go check the lines and see if the production's up to stuff. Uh, you know, we've got we've got some ugnots out there counting ingots. You know the Ugnaughts, uh, they don't count so good. You can't really blame it, boss. I mean, for real, it's like getting the parts out here is is, is tough. The parts we need is parts we ain't got. The parts that got to be ordered. It's a lot of waiting. All right, well, fine. We're going to get back to the office. You're going to give me a full rundown of the parts that you need, and you're going to give me a full rundown of how you're going to get us back up to speed. I'll show you the cost breakdown and sure everything. Sure thing, sure thing, sure thing. No, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll have this all worked out. We'll have this worked out before our next shift break, huh? Yeah, you better. And I've I've got to pick up a new friggin' ID card. I lost it behind the friggin' pallets. Gotta get that chain code, boss. Yep, gotta get the creds. And we just yammer our way across the <laughs> entire factory floor. Uh, uh, I'll make a charm check. Okay. Um, oh, totally go with that. Like, yeah, and I I would say that you should get a boost because I'm being uh, the hard nose in here, and you're being the hey. We're just doing the best we can, kind of guy. For sure, for sure. Absolutely. Then I was defending him. Am I getting? Am I getting one boost or two? I'm gonna go with two. Okay. And my difficulty. That is going to be against three purple and a setback. All right. I will remove a setback. Awesome. With my multiple charmer uh, specialization skills. We've found where you shine. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Don't ask me to do anything else but talk, and we'll be just fine. You can smile. Maybe wink. I, I oh. can. Yes, I can do those things. Uh, let's what, see what, what we got here. I'm rolling one yellow, two green, uh, and two boosts against three purple. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, let's see. Let's look at those uh, those specialization skills again. That this tree here. Are you natural? Let's see. Let's see. By the way, that was one threat. Audience, with a couple of very blank boost. And a blank wow. ability die. That was harsh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nothing I can do after no, the fact. So no reroll skills. I don't see a reroll skill. It would be natural something. Yeah. yeah, I don't have that. I should have downgraded the I should have downgraded the difficulty, but you know, that being said, I did not. So one threat. You know, you know what? I do have Smooth Talker. Which does yes, what? Do. Yes. I'd like that. to use Smooth Talker to spend one destiny point to add one success to that roll. <laughs> I'll go with it. Yeah. What? That is awesome. Just enough. Success and a all right, and if someone could remind me again what the the code what the spend, oh, <laughs> fate is turning. Fate is turned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's sour. How I'm thinking, especially with it being a turn of destiny, to make it so that it's successful. It feels like the actual manager Celestin is just leaving that office. And turning away, and you can vaguely hear, it's like, what are you meaning that the pallets are light? We've been weighing them every single time that they've been full. Unless there's no way that anyone's stealing them. Like, it's impossible to stack those ingots wrong. And just going out past where you were, and talking to their second, and just like, very animately, like arms waving, just immense frustrations. We've been through this. This is the fourth time. <laughs> They're going off. The last thing that you see is them lifting one of the ingots and like, see, it warns us. There's an amber light that goes off. Clunk. 
then you're inside the office. As you can see, this person just very animatedly uh, discussing how it's impossible for them to be missing any ingots. All right. Um, let's look busy. Okay. So someone was wanting to try and slice into the loader droids? Or... Yes. Well, can we get the lights off? For, is there a way? I mean, is that something that we could do from here? I can, this is like the, the managerial station. Is there like a like on the yeah. wall just a brick of switches to turn off like by section? I'm thinking that it's a bit more pure management as opposed to okay. the safety officer. It's not like an operations booth. Well, no. Well, then I will absolutely try to get some lifter droids to make a distraction for his bird. Um, distraction enough to get over to the Tabana gas or what whatnot to make a bigger boom. Um, do we not want to do both? <laughs> as, I was just thinking, like, if we're in the managerial office, we can get the information we came for, can't we? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can get, I'll, I'll search for any information I can get. And if I have any advantage, I want to use that for the droids, maybe. Okay. See where this stuff is going. See if I can get a manifest. See if I can get... Uh, a trans Transpo records and yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go with that. This is going to be a hard check. I'm thinking that it would be... Their normal security would be a one red, two purple difficulty. Uh, I would toss in a setback on account if you don't have the manager's password. I, can I make a skullduggery check to see if I can find the manager's password among the many data pads scattered about in the managerial office? Okay, I can definitely go with that. Uh, in that case, that would be an average. All right, so average skullduggery check? Yeah. Okay. It would just be an average skullduggery check, so two purple. Got it. <laughs> That'll be uh, three successes and one advantage. So the manager uh, that was walking out, uh, as he was walking out, he left his personal data pad on a small table near the door and did not sign out. Nice. Perfect. Listen all y'all to sabotage. And there is, a, there's a, there is a, a message. One of the first messages on there is a recent password reset. Uh, or a forced <laughs> password reset with a temporary password that was granted Ooh. in the message. Very nice. Yep. Yes. Um. Ex excuse me. Uh. Uh. I. I think. I think this Kurt is for you. And Das will bring the data pad over and just set it lightly in front of him on the table. Ooh. Thank you very much. And uh, when to get to work on. Seeing what I can find, what I can pull out of this. It's going to be, especially that you've got the password, it's going to be a easy check. I'm still going to spend a dark side point, mostly because I noticed that I've got too many, and <laughs> turn that into one red. In general, I'm expecting this to easily pass. I mean, it's an easy check. But we're going to use the amount of successes for primary information gathering and advantages for other fun things. Oh, is this just one red now? It's not hard anymore? Because we have access? Yeah, it got dropped down because you got the guy's password. All right, I have uh, the ability Code Breaker, which I can remove any setback from check, uh, one setback from checks, which I don't have any setback. But the second part is decrease difficulty of checks to break codes. Or, oh, yeah. Decreased yeah, by one. This, this one doesn't have a limitation on how low I can get it. So yeah. can I make this um, simple? My master slicer says minimum of easy, but the code breaker one yeah. just says reduces by one. I'm still wanting to keep the uh, red in there. I mean, okay. I would argue if you have the password, you're not really breaking a code anymore. You're just snooping. That's that, that's that's fair. That. that is fair. That is okay. a fair way of putting it. Woo! Four success Very and nice. one threat. Nice. Which has then triggered another password reset. <laughs> you still have... Okay, so four pieces of information. One is is that the reason why the foreman is in such a, a panic about this is because the ship for this stuff is supposed to be uh, arriving and departing soon. In fact, 
some of the load lifter droids for those pallets have already started picking up and moving towards the cargo ship. You're even able to get a loading manifest for it. So, mm-hmm. like, pallet orc 2 is going to be going first, then bash 3, and things like that. There's a weird coded destination for it. It's isk isk zesh 3244 orc which it looks very... It's code. Exactly what code it is. Yeah. There has been a note that uh, Director Jer Gerard has transferred to the same location. Oh, oh shoot. Jared? Oh, no. When Jer Gerard is being referred to in... Like, this is essentially looking at emails and uh, also the shared managerial calendar. He's listed as transferring over to new project. He is the absolute head of the Imperial Energy Systems. Okay. Like the company. Imperial Energy Directorate. That you're in. That you're in. Jer Gerard is the one actually running it and the director of it, actually. Jer Gerard is the director. And it looks like, on at least on the calendar, it looks like. He has transferred fairly recently to this, yeah, Iskzes three two four four dash Auric location where it is, eh, but it does look like the rest of these metals and that massive crystal and the Tybania gas are all going to the same spot. Hmm. There's a cargo ship that is due to be leaving within a couple hours. Get a load of this. We could we could hitch a ride if you guys are up for sneaking on board a ship. Stowaway stuff. I wouldn't have to go through the security. That's true. I'm always down for that. Um, is this a ship for product or for people? It's a ship for product. Like, they're loading on the ingots and all that sort of stuff. It's most certainly a cargo ship, but the cargo ships do have a small organic component to their crew. Otherwise, they're... I mean, that sounds like they're moldy, but I know what you mean. (laughs) Because, yeah, the Imperial cargo ships are these giant, wacky wedge things that has a bunch of cargo containers hanging off of the back of it. Well, worst comes to worst, it's, that, it's shielded. We could uh, go to... You know, it's they, they have to have safety equipment with three breathers and stuff and, you know, breathable atmosphere. So, like, worst comes to worst, my atmosphere... I don't know, like, uh, like uh, at, Atmo masks. Maybe, you know, like, gotta have something. We could <laughs> at least grab some oh, of those. Oh, oh. The cargo ship looks like a Windows pointer. Got it. <laughs> it does look like a cursor. Oh, oh my, my gosh. god, it does. <laughs> yeah, especially once you get the uh, cargo containers in there, it really, really does. Or, or <laughs> we could always get to the cargo ship. I could, we could find a way to uh, mark it and follow it. It's the spaceship version of mouthful mode. <laughs> <laughs> there absolutely is a place for a crew. It is a cargo ship. It's the rough equivalent of a container ship. I mean, these ships are definitely big enough for us to hide on. But if you're not liking that ideal, we can at least track it. I like the tracking. I like the option of being somewhere else as needed and being able to get the information out. Well, I mean, we're going to want to have a ship. I, I can get us a ride. I can get us a ride, right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm only good for one thing. Well, two things on this. I mean, you're not wanting to use this as a ride? Um, my logic is this is an imperial controlled process, which means everybody's going to have IDs, everybody's going to be counted, and it's a small crew. If we're caught, there is nothing we can do. If we're on a shipping container, if this takes three weeks, we're going to die. Nah, we got explosives. We're good. But on the other hand, <laughs> if there's a small crew, it's pretty easy to just, once you're in hyperspace, take over the crew. Or or hide. If, it's, if the crew's that small, I mean, we might be able to just stay in one spot for a while. I mean, Just hope okay. nobody has to use the bathroom the whole time. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> we gotta find a random container in the back. <sighs> Oh, I uh, are we are we talking about this as players or characters right now? I I was currently talking out of character, hence the fact that okay. you're missing the vocal fry. But um, yes, yes. What do you guys think? Because Teeth is looking at it as he does not like being contained. He sees this as a potential 
um, about six different potential dead ends. He does not see a lot of flexibility in this choice. That is his specific this, reticence. As a player, this might be a good time for Dosk to send Sixer onto the cargo ship as our tracker. Ooh. Ooh. I forgot about your little I dude. I did too. That's brilliant. Uh, again, mouse droid. He's inconspicuous. We can load him up with uh, with tracking and communications gear or you know, even just the tracking bit, right? And we can mm-hmm. track him. We have encryption stuff. I can I can give him uh, an encrypted signal or something like a frequency that's not used for like imperial communications. Okay. Yeah, and do sort of the hyperspace tracking the same way that they did it with the Falcon. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So so Dosk will suggest um, using Sixer as our our plant, and we can go from there. All right, I guess uh, we'll break into us are still kind of talking about it. I mean, wouldn't you, haven't you always wanted to fly something like that? It's basically a tugboat. You can drop all the cargo and just zip it around. I I don't think you know the logistics of how tugboats work. Yeah, that's probably true. (laughs) They're generally sturdy and slow. Uh, Look, if, if we're unwilling... And I know personally myself, I don't want to be stuck on a cargo ship for a number of weeks in hyperspace. Uh, this That sounds horrible. Um, however, I have a small friend who may be able to sneak aboard said cargo ship and we could track small friend. Oh, yeah, little buddy. Kurt, I'm sure you have enough gear to, to load Sixer up with a, a way we could track him through hyperspace. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, totally. And I can get my stuff back, too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so... You can get your I'll, stuff back. I'll, uh, what we could do is we can, you know, he'll be on the ship. We can use uh, the tra- trajectory that he can, you know, send to us as before they jump to hyperspace, get their trajectory, kind of plot a course that would be in that general direction. We know they're going down a specific corridor, so, I mean, all we got to do is kind of get close and we should be able to pick him up and then find where they're at. Refresh my memory, if you don't mind, Kurt. Uh, uh, we have the the ship, but do we have the destination? Or was that part of the coded message? Well, they mentioned it was down a specific hyperspace corridor that doesn't go anywhere. They just didn't mm-hmm. know where at the, you know, where the, the... They don't know the destination of the corridor, yes. Correct, yeah. <sighs> I mean... It's not as long a shot as it could be. I mean, it's definitely doable. On the plus side, we don't have to follow Sixer. All we have to do is wait for Sixer's signal to pop back up, and we can we can jump to his location. Unless Sixer can uh, find a port to access the long-range communications, it might be a little difficult. Although, I'm sure, being a cargo ship, they probably have other mouse droids. So, I mean, maybe uh, yeah, well, they've that got was my- access. That was my thought. Uh, a Sixer would be easily able to blend in on a cargo ship uh, as a maintenance droid. Okay. Um, but I wonder then if if you would be able to assist Sixer's programming somewhat? Absolutely. I can make sure we have uh, an encrypted signal that is off Imperial channels. Yeah, totally. Doable. Okay. This all hinges. I will have to ask Sixer if this is okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He, uh, Sixer oh, has a tendency. That's nice. Sixer will do most of what I ask. But uh, again, uh, I've had him for quite a while. I wouldn't want to lose him inadvertently on this cargo ship. So um, when we uh, when we leave here, I'll, I'll ask him. Cool. Yeah. Let's. Uh, are, we, if, are we still setting up our fireworks show? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask him now while, while, while you're setting that up. Yeah. Why don't you guys work on Sixer, hopefully? Sixers amenable to the task. And uh, Bird. Yes. <laughs> uh, that laugh means you know your time has come. Alrighty then. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking since Kurt's been doing all his and he, he again mimes the hunting peck. <laughs> all his stuff. Uh, we probably want to mop up a little bit and prov- 
prevent them from seeing what we were up to, right? Yes. So uh, I will go ahead and use my talent, Improvised Detonation. Uh, so <laughs> okay. I need to make a hard mechanics check to create an explosive, the damage of which will equal my intellect plus my mechanics plus the net successes of the check. <laughs> okay, that that is wonderful. So oh, I if I succeed it. on it, it will have a default of nine damage because that's the intellect plus the mechanics skills. Okay, that that's cool. I am going to upgrade that check once because <laughs> it feels this feels dangerous for some oh, yes. silly oh, reason. Yes. Yeah, it just is. a little. Seems uh, like a great idea. I mean, he has stabilizer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's mix that up here. So this is going to be mechanics check. Hard, so one red and two purple with the upgrade. Let's just see how this goes. Are right, you good to get a mad devil and we'll take care of the sixer. <laughs> okay, so we have one net success. So it will be a, an explosive that does 10 damage, if that matters for anything. I also <laughs> got four advantage. So can I spend those advantage to um, create this improvised explosive device in such a way that it doesn't look like an explosives device in, in the aftermath? Like if they brought in like the arson investigators or whatever the EOE people, <laughs> it, it could, it could be an industrial accident. Like maybe some chemicals touched that weren't supposed to touch. Yeah, I can go with that. So like we're in definitely. an office, right? But we're in the middle of an industrial office, right? Yes. And that's, that's the big thing. You're in the middle of an industrial area. Right. So like maybe just outside, there's a pallet with some different, you know. Oh, oh, like, like the samples I had mentioned earlier. Like, they've got little a, a sample rack or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so maybe, conveniently, that rack is knocked over. It's the testing rack. Like, it's a place where you put all of the test samples for the different lots. And as has been previously stated, there's a lot of Tybania gas. Like, one side is almost entirely Tybania gas. And okay, perfect. crystal. That's that's so, fairly easy to fuel for yeah, other equipment destabilize. Stuff. So yeah, so Bird will spend a few minutes tinkering, and uh, <laughs> then he'll kind of turn to the group. Let me know when you're ready to go, because uh, once I turn this knob, there's going to be a definite countdown. Oh, God, give just give us just just a moment, please. <laughs> just, he just very decidedly and pointedly leaves his hands away from the knob. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a. Computers check on Sixer to give him an encrypted channel off of Imperial frequencies. And I think I have some skills for this, actually. That does sound like it's a computer thing. It does sound like it's code breaking. It does sound like it should be a hard check to start with. Okay, so it does sound like code breaking. So then with that, I'll make it a an average because I can reduce the difficulty by one. I'm not defensive slicing, so not that. Nope. Flip a once point. Per, once per round may take a master slicer incidental to suffer two strain and decrease difficulty of computers check or other slicing checks by one to a minimum of easy. Nice. Maybe that as well and make it easy. Sure. I'll suffer two strain. Where's my sheet? All right. So now it's my computer skill versus an easy check. Are there any setback or anything for this? I'm thinking that this is fine work, so it should be with one setback. All right. I'm going to remove one per rank of code breaker from checks to break codes or decrypt communications. Fair enough. And then, so is it... Did you upgrade it? Is it red or is it just a purple? Uh, it's just a purple. I'm not upgrading it. <laughs> Please give me a success this time. Please. Oh, my God. So close. <laughs> one success and one advantage. Man, those <laughs> blank dice. So many <laughs> blank <laughs> dice. <sighs> Oh, goodness. Yeah. Like, I don't want to use a red because I put Sixer in the pet range, and I don't like doing despairs to pets. Oh, they're so good. With the advantage, I guess he's going to be the one slicing into. Can I give him, like, a boost whenever whenever, yeah, the, whenever they do that, their, sure. like, yeah. long range thing? Cool. Yep. Hey, uh, I think we, uh, I think this turned out really well. How you feeling, Sixer? All right. If we are then going to be beating a hasty retreat, as it were, 
with that in tow to send him off to the the transport and then to get as far away from whatever our friend is doing with his quote unquote stabilized options. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm thinking, do we want to make a sneaky retreat or do we want to just walk out like we walked in with the, basically, are we rolling stealth or deception on our walk, way out the door? Hmm. Well, we're in uniform. I figured we would just like leave. And then once we get out of sight, go back to the ponchos. <laughs> yeah. I think that's our best bet because okay. none yeah, of us have chain codes to clock out as it were. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, the reason I ask is if we're not going to be making a scene, I would rather roll on un- indistinguishable. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not saying roll mechanically. I'm using roll <laughs> vernacularly. Like I would rather perform in such a way that it is the indistinguishable talent rather than, you know, deception yeah. or something. I do want to do a roll for that. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be a combined. I, indistinguishable actually is deception now that I look at it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be their perception against your stealth plus what have you. Mm-hmm. If I do plus the stealth suits plus your indistinguishable, it's a group check this time. So that then just turns it into... We are walking very casually with our clipboards and sample trays and tools. <laughs> My stormtroopers, because they're the ones with the best perception. Oh, and we have name tags right. now because we are in the managerial office. <laughs> yeah, we found the <laughs> clock. <laughs> The name tags are for people yeah. that are not us, but we have them, so they're visually there. Okay, so that would be for you and your stealth. Or your... Do we want to flip a point, too, just to make it that much more secure, or do we want to oh, save yeah. it just in case? We have three. Go for it. Oh, why not? <laughs> All right, Ben. Okay. We're making it even more difficult. Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> okay, so I have a... Yeah, I'm not tempting fate. I'm doing the roll before I say anything. Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you I'm happy it. with the results of that roll. Yeah! <laughs> nice. That was frightening. So. See, <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, so this is the Stormtroopers again, the most perceptive ones, trying to look. They're actually trying to be vigilant in that. So they're rolling... Two green versus five red, because we be sneaky. the way deception of everyone around here is, plus the indistinguishable, plus the uh, improved indistinguishable, so it wraps around everyone, but get walk this way kind of thing. You absolutely make it up past that, and I'm, I'd offer up for the four threat, because it's three failure and four threat. Like, three failure, just no one pay, pays attention. I'm thinking for the four threat, you're so indistinguishable. No one in the group noticed that you were gone. Someone had fallen down onto a lower outcropping, and they had to work to get everyone to pull them up. The entire tour group was wasting time, essentially, <laughs> and you were able to catch back up to them before they make it out of the tour. The, the, the guide's like, look, I told you they'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right as the guide says, I told you they'd be fine, the entire cliff shakes from whatever bird's explosion is. <laughs> the Tabana the gas explosion just rocks the whole place. Uh. So we okay. stroll whistling back to the group in time to see uh, that kid. It was that kid tried to get a closer look at the lava <laughs> 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 because it was so cool. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, I guess we better wish your little pal luck and get to a place where we can follow him. So you go back to the hover taxi? Yeah. Now we just finish finish the tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, finish the tour, go back to the taxi, and then head for a place where you could charter a ship? I went to the Sullivan Falls, and all I got was this lousy poncho. <laughs> yes, you get to keep the poncho. You gotta return the the shield, but you keep the poncho. Exactly, it's commemorative. Commemorative, I love it. 
I grab Dosk uh, by the shoulder and I say, "Hey, look! I still got a read on your little friend here. He's not. He's just fine." You can see a little pain from this low frequency, uh, like locator. Just so you know, he's safe. Dosk lets out like you can feel that he's been holding in like this tense breath. Like it, it, there's a tension that releases when you say you've checked in on him. Oh, oh, thank the maker. Yeah, he's doing just fine. You know, I hate sending the little guy out to do stuff like this. I just, I have such a bad feeling about it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's good to let him be part of the crew, let him part of the part of the team. So yeah, it's probably probably good for him. They probably uh, they probably appreciate the opportunity. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, do you think I should should I install a vocoder on him? That would be uh... hilarious. <laughs> Depends on his attitude. I don't know. I think it would be great either way. Well, let's let's not give him a voice until we, you know, get him back from the Imperial ship. Oh, yeah, I can't do that for Yes, me. yes, you're right, you're right. But we got this. We got this, eh? We got this. And he te- reaches around and, and pats everybody on the shoulders like, yeah, we just have to wait for the ping. All right, so are we are we are we paying for a ship, or are we uh, are we acquiring a ship? I'll figure that out. That could probably get us on board at the very least. Well, how about we go cruising and see what's at the dock? Time to go shopping. I love shopping. <laughs> <laughs> As you're heading towards the part of the spaceport where there actually are smaller freighters to charter or purchase or other nefarious things abscond yeah (laughs) it takes a bit of time like the falls themselves are about an hour out of town so it takes you about an hour to get back as you get there you're starting to have to go through a bit of traffic and at that point you hear the low rumble of this giant cargo ship lift up and slowly make its way through the sky going out it disappears into the dark blue sky that's filled with clouds. Shortly thereafter, you hear the whip snap of it jumping into hyperspace. Only one thing left to do now. There wouldn't happen to be like, I don't know, a jump master or something. Something <laughs> something uh, speedy. I mean, do we have a destiny point that we could spend on there being the perfect ship for our needs? Yeah, we have two left, actually. <laughs> I believe, yeah, I believe we, we have a destiny point. Uh, might be a worthwhile spend to find, you know, what? How, how much do you look like a car park attendant, like oh, a valet, yes. as it were? I, yes. I, I, I like to think I look like someone who's using the valet, less All right. than someone who vest. is a valet. I could put a vest on. <laughs> I could, I could, I could, you know, sweet talk a valet while someone else grabbed a couple of ship remotes. Perhaps. Oh. Yeah, let's get the, doc- get the docking codes for some of these. Uh, I guess we're headed to the... Um... The long-term parking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we've got somebody on distraction duty, somebody on um, codes, and somebody on lifting. Which I feel sadly leaves our mechanic afloat again. Not necessarily. Um, the things could... Everything could be locked up. Mechanically, like mechanic locks, you could hotwire. You yeah. could, yeah, because I can't do anything with ships. The codes are something that we would do after the fact. Like we would just get the codes. They, I don't know if that would be in a computer system or if they would have like fobs or something. But like, I mean, also one other thing that is a possibility, just to, to throw it out there, is rolling up on a ship that looks like it's under repair and no one's around, like either as a hobby ship or uh, something has gone wrong with it, rolling up and fixing the problem and taking it that way because no one's going to be watching a uh, ship that's under repair near as much as they're going to be watching a ship that's fully functional. Mm -hmm. They won't expect it to go anywhere. That's true. Exactly. Find one that has an active hyperdrive, maybe just, you know, a little beat up otherwise. So now we've got uh, yes. distraction, code getting, 
mechanic stuff and potentially skullduggerous stuff. I think that is that is excellent because my brain is fading. All right, let's do this. Which one are we wanting to do first? Probably the distraction. Okay, that makes sense. Dosk unzips his coverall down to about his waist, <laughs> uh, pulls his arms out. Uh, Dosk is fit, but not overly muscular, uh, wearing uh, a standard uh, coverall undershirt, and walks his way toward the toward the uh, the valet booth, the attendant booth, so to speak. I'm going to go with that this is going to be a one red, one purple kind of a check. All right. And of course, I'm going to go with charm. Of course. Of course. I mean, doing that, how could you not? (laughs) You are a golden god. (laughs) You said one red, one purple? Yep, one red, one purple. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a date. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My date. I'm looking for my date. And he... They just <laughs> look oh. absolutely dejected. What? <laughs> Yikes. Welcome to the family. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm into droids. <laughs> <laughs> We should have had you Sixer know, with us. No! Come on, come on. I was into people with a lot of fur, but oh. I'm kind of in a working on me phase. Man, I have disarming so. smile. Oh! This is why I should have read my sheet it? before I rolled. <laughs> I have my book in front of me so I don't forget. Oh, I I have. So, you know, I know it doesn't doesn't give us our descriptions in the RPG sessions, but I've got the odd dude sheet pulled up, which I have all the trees on. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking, I'm looking at the trees. Literally I hit the roll button and I scrolled down. I was like, Oh look, disarming smile. I just, you know, I can, what does succeed. disarming uh, smile do? Uh, take the action succeeded in opposed charm check to lower all defenses of a target by ranks and disarming smile until the end of the encounter. I have just kidding, uh, which I can ignore one failure generated on a social check. I've got congenial. May wait, suffer wait, 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 strain. wait, wait, wait. Ignoring one failure is all you need. Yeah. Just kidding, because you only have the one failure versus your one success. So, so you, you'd come out with one success. Yeah, yeah so um, as an incidental, I'm going to s- smile. Oh, wow, <laughs> I'm going to smile at I'm, him. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna, I have to spend a destiny point to do it. Okay. For just kidding. Oh, that's right. Just kidding. Once per round as an incidental, spend one destiny point to ignore a failure generated on a social check by the character or any ally in short range. That's so cool. Wait a minute. That's not a failure. That's a despair. Uh, Oh, you cancel despair. despair. Um, Cancel despair. Not a failure. Okay, so we've got a valet that's still working on their me time. (laughs) Yep, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Which is fine. You do you, bro. Like, they're definitely going to remember you on account of this. Like, they're absolutely going to remember Dosk, but it's not going to be a <laughs> try and turn you in kind of thing. You, like, you know, this was an all dice have canceled out I, result, I, not a uh, full out failure, high yeah. threat, or lots of failure kind of thing. Look, I, I feel I was a little out of it when we came to Sullust. Uh, I don't quite remember what ship was his. Can can you walk me around the lot? Maybe I can find it. Um, um all right. Yeah. Wonderful. He'll start moving around the different freighters. There's even a couple sort of personal fighters that are there. No, no, it wasn't yeah. that one. Was it Corellian? Was it Aduro? I don't. I don't. Rem- I don't remember. Oh. And can, we walk away from the, the the attendance booth. Can we throw something at like one of like the land speeders and set off an alarm to get their attention? Maybe they <laughs> exit the booth. 
No, he, can, I do a, can I flip a light no, side point no, for that? To set no, up no, an alarm? Walking with him. Yeah, oh, so, walking, so, so Dosk, oh, they meant we're walking away. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, okay. no, we Dosk are. failed his initial charm, the, or the initial charm check canceled out. But Doss just asked the attendant to like walk him around the lot to see okay. if he could remember what ship he came in on. Perfect. Because he was a little out of it. We're going to sidle on through because it's empty. Mm-hmm. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. Hey, Bird, when I'm done with this, you think you could uh, seal this place? <laughs> Why do you need to deal with this place? No, seal. Seal oh, the doors. Se- Make it oh. so that they can't get back in as easy. Yes, yes, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wait, we, we, you want me to what? <laughs> yeah, I can handle that. I want you to blow this place to kingdom come. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn into you asking MDP to just blow up everything. <laughs> no, what we need you to do is set an explosive that we're not going to use. <laughs> <laughs> just jam some putty in the lock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is fine until they use a match to try and it, poke it out. Well, oh. the match is fine too. They just can't use battery. <laughs> mm, it's true. And like months from now, someone's going to be working on that Tabana gas exchange <laughs> and it's just going to explode. Oh no. <sighs> yeah. I'd like to assume that if we didn't actually use it, Bird would diffuse the, <laughs> the potential of it just going off on some poor worker. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're sneaking oh, through. <laughs> Back in the booth, we have the booth, the slicing, and the driving, flying. Yeah, it shouldn't take me very long. These these valet systems shouldn't be too. Uh, he says, hopefully. <laughs> this one, I'm figuring, is just going to be an average check. Okay, you're not really trying to really mess around with it much. You're just trying to find a. You're trying to ser- search through it, which, yeah, that would be an average. Okay. Can I use the code breaker to decrease it by one? Yeah, I can go with that. All right. Let's see if see if I can get any more blank dice. Oh, oh, that was your fault. One success. A that was solo entirely success. your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to the superstitions about D1. <laughs> yeah, so I just grab a, I mean, have we already seen the ship so we know what we're looking for? Or am I scrolling through and I find on the like um, long term in repairs kind of thing? That is more what I'm thinking is going through. It's like that one's that one's kind of cool. That one's nice. No, those ones are just ugly. Those ones have a weird smell to them. I have not been in <laughs> oh. any of those that don't smell. Oh my gosh, and no. I, 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 I want to be leaning over the yes, shoulder. Yes, You got to tell me which one you want. I'm like, what no. about this one? Yeah. No, that maneuvering's crap. No. Okay, what about this one? Um, uh, put a pin in it. Well, check this one. This one's, uh, this one's un- in for repairs, but it still has hyperdrive, and it looks really quick. It's Corellian. Oh, oh, Corellian's pretty reliable, even if it looks like junk. Yeah, uh, it looks like cosmetic repairs, too. It looks like it was just beat up. Well, I mean, handling can be iffy on, on pretty much anything, but that one looks promising. Yeah, I, I can fly that. We'll be good. It's a little, it's a little dumpy, but, I mean, she got some zip, it looks like. Look but that also specs. means they won't take us seriously when they look at us. And he, That's true. he kind of tugs at the lapels of his very tired peacoat, like... <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll transmit the docking codes to the ship so that it's there when we get there, and all we have to do is take off. All right, yeah, we're good to go. I uh, transmitted the signals to the ship. The codes, the uh, docking codes, we're good to go. Let's lock this door. Forever. No. no. <laughs> well, I mean, locking the door does not mean obliterating it, so... No, I know. Well, I mean, like, I, let's just disable this lock somehow. Well, bird, uh... Time to do your thing, but not I the imagine, not the boomy I imagine thing. Teeth like slides the doorstop over and jams it under the bottom of the door. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was about to say, yeah, I was gonna penny it shut. <laughs> no, you so, guys. Uh, you how guys many meters of my debt tape do you want me to use on the door? No, no, no. <laughs> you, you guys head to the lot. Do your two, mechanic two, stuff. Two, I'll two, I'll get the door. <laughs> All the debt tape. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it around the building three times. No. <laughs> I don't know if I have that many meters. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so Tifa's literally just going to kind of lean on the door and and just penny it shut. Which, yeah, if we... you don't have context for what that is, is basically you're wedging it 
in a very inconvenient way. It can be undone, but it takes a fair amount of effort because you're jamming things between the door and the door frame. So there's a lot of pressure not letting you do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's yeah, okay. pretty impressive. All right, yeah, let's uh, let's get this show on the road. You got to know things. Oh, um, and I will also take the moment to come to our friend on our private comms and be like, this is where we're heading. Tell him it's Bash 38. I'm just like leaning over your shoulder. Tell tell him, tell him Bash 38. Yeah, I think everybody could hear you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. (laughs) But anyway, 38. And on on the private comms, you get like a "Mm mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> you think that was for us <laughs> I mean probably but I don't know the conversation and I don't want to uh, I'll turn my comms on do we need to get you a distraction <laughs> and I look at bird <laughs> somebody say <laughs> distraction <laughs> on, the, on the com the com comes back and it's, again you're catching a part of a conversation oh no no I think you know I, I, I'm sure I'll just, I'll go back to the hotel. I'm sure, I'm sure he's there. Uh, I'm sure he wouldn't leave me behind. <laughs> he doesn't want us to leave him behind. That means he wants a, he wants a, he wants a distraction, right? <laughs> no, no, oh, that's not oh, what we're no. doing. No? Oh, no. All right. All right. Well, I'm having fun with this. I like the booms. <laughs> and again, the calm lights up for a second. I, I'm sorry. I took you so far away from the, from the, Booth, I know you need to get back to work. I'm sorry, I wasted so much of your time walking around this lot. There are 37 pennies on the door now. <laughs> just, just all the way up to the top. <laughs> and then for good measure, I put the chair under the doorknob. <laughs> Alright, let's go the, out the window or something, I don't know. Dusting off the hands. Alright, let's get going. And then I hop on comms one last time. Uh, leave him before he gets to the door. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, wow. good He's, call. And then the com lights up. He's on his way back. Oh, oh <laughs> get, get out of here. I, I, I thought that was, was clear when back, I said but... uh, I've taken you too far, but that's that's fine. I'll meet you. Uh, you said Besh 38? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I'm like crawling out of the little side window that they have, the tiny little fan that they put in it next to the next to his chair. Just crawling out of it. It's the nice thing about being a bothan. You fit places others don't. Right? Uh, falls out on his head. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I not have pushed you? There's only really the valet there. You get to the ship. It looks like it had been under repair for a long while, but it just needs the hypermatter reactor igniter to be installed. And then it should be good to power up and go. So is the part, can we, uh, hmm, what if we flip a light side point and the part is in a crate right here next to the ship? Oh, yes. I was entirely intending for oh, that. okay, like, okay. It's there. It's just, like, this has been in repair for so long that, yeah, the part's been delivered. It just needs to be installed. He's been waiting on the crew to show up to, like, do all the installation and stuff. At this point, he's taking a job in town. He even has, like, a like single room occupancy place that he's staying in. He still owns the ship, but eh, gotcha. It might fly at some point. Can't afford the repairs right now. He has to do some yeah. local work. Yeah, you find the hypermatter reactor igniter just sitting there in the crate. Hey, uh, Bird, you're pretty good with mechanics. Yeah, it's part of your uh, part of your boom stuff. Let's uh, uh you gotta know the- a few of things about uh, you know, nuts and bolts if you're gonna make a bomb. Well, this is a big bomb, but we don't want it to like kill us. We just want it to. <laughs> I know. Uh, just, just push give us. it here. I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh, oh God. Slow. Okay. Ah. You're pulling me. You're pulling me. You're pulling me. Let's just slow, slow is for amateurs. Come on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. I'm very small. <laughs> First off, this can be done while in sublight flight to install it. Like the ship itself will fly around, but it won't go to other systems. Without this installed. Okay. So if you want, one could take off and essentially do the two rolls at the same time. Let's do that. The installation is going to be a average check, just a two purple, since you're not really under any sort of time pressure or anything. May I assist? Yes. Cool. Yes, you may. 
You gotta put that thing here. Oh, you did. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> five success and one advantage. This is this is a piece of cake. <laughs> that was way faster than I thought it was gonna be. I told you. It's easy. <laughs> it's just like making a bomb, except uh, I don't actually <laughs> want it to blow up. <laughs> That's frighteningly uh, reassuring. Can I beg the advantage as a boost towards whatever piloting check I'm about to have to make? Yeah, sure. Go for it. All yours. Okay. Oh, hold on. Before we do this, <laughs> everybody on board? Yo, yeah. Not too long after you guys board the ship, uh, the rest of the crew boards the ship, you can hear the footsteps coming up the ramp. Uh, Dusk makes his way. Ah, so this is what you've chosen. It's quick. Well, Gamor chose us, I think. <laughs> you uh, weren't there for uh, the moment. <laughs> no, no, of course. I, I was I was doing my part in distracting the, the valet while you picked this. I can hear your tone. I just want you to know that. But sometimes it's best not to be flashy. Oh, uh, of course. I, again, I, you know, the, I'm sure there are lots of benefits to a ship like, uh, and he runs his finger like across one of the wall panels like this. Do you look at the dust on your finger? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, she ain't pretty, but she'll get us where we're going. That's all we need. I assume it has a fresher. Oh, you know what? I didn't I, I check. Hope so. I mean, they're they're <laughs> normally built in. I certainly don't want to be in a position where we're picking a corner. Well, at least there's a cargo space for the corners. I was going to say, we got plenty of corner space out here. We're not hauling anything. <laughs> all right. Well, park it. Buckle. Let's boogie. Man, I hope that stabilizer is bolted down. Otherwise, uh, this could be a bumpy ride. Uh, I start flipping switches. I'm figuring it's just going to be a single pilot space check to get out. Is anyone co-piloting? I can I can assist. See, I have three agility, but let me see. Do I have uh, astrogation? I don't, but I have four rank or four uh, green in astrogation. I have piloting space as a skill, but it, I only have it at a two. I don't have two ranks. I have two green. So okay, I've got three green. What about you, what about you, Bird? I don't have anything in piloting space. <laughs> okay, so right. none of us have ranks. I'll jump up there and help out. Well, I can I can at least uh, point it out on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know this makes it go up and down. I know this engages don't, the don't touch that engages the, the go forward. Stop. Yeah. Just sit, go, put your seatbelt on. And this on. here, this here's the. <laughs> I'm going to start <laughs> slapping. This one hands. makes the light streaks, right? The light streaks that. Is get this us one the blasters? Faster. Stop it! <laughs> Just reaching around. <laughs> oh man, so many lights. Yes, that, and they're all very shiny. Now, if you want to start getting a reading there, I will prepare the ship. Should probably hurry. I don't know how long it's going to take for them to figure out that something's up. Um, Ben, how does co-piloting work? It's like a roll that gives me boosts if it succeeds or something. Oh, it's a it? roll that decreases the difficulty of the uh, pilot's roll. It's an average piloting roll that would then reduce the difficulty of your roll. Okay. Cool. Cool. You said an average, or yep. Yeah, so two purple. And this is piloting space? Yes, it is piloting space. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Success and an advantage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, the question I have is how fast are you wanting to go? One, th two, three, or four? Um, I would like to go a prudent speed that shows that we are leaving quickly, but not that immediately draws attention. Like so, two okay, three. so a two. Just like two, maybe? Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so in that case, with the successful co-piloting check, that will be a one red, one purple check. All right, as this is probably the last check of the night. And you do get a boost. one boost just from the ship. Awesome. Because it has a plus one handling. So you get anything for the advantage also? Is that a, a boost for that too? I can go with that. Yeah. 
Okay, so boost for the ship, boost for the advantage, boost for the other advantage, and then a red and a purple? Yes. Let's not blow up. Come on. <laughs> what what he said. <laughs> well, it's four people who barely know each other in a ship that they've never been in before that was on the dock for repairs. This is a great idea. Nothing better. Oh, God, so many dies. Yes! <laughs> oh, no. Welcome to oh. Leslie's party. That's two blank yeah. boost. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, hold on. For if we eventually oh. escape gravity, can I hit the go fast lever? <laughs> um, just, just real quick, I just whacked my mic, Ben. I'm sorry. But um, that's two blank boost for a total of four advantage. Um, something goes wrong, but it doesn't go horribly wrong, question mark? There's a lot of customizations in the, in the control panel. What so if we... maybe, maybe there were some buttons flipped that don't do what they're labeled to do. Uh, it's, we, it's, that does make sense yeah, it's, it's customized for somebody with four arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you're stealing is a, oh, you're stealing Bobby's ship. Well, there's six of us, so I mean, we Wait, have, taking, there's three of us. We have six arms right here. Is that a picture <laughs> of Jet Dexter on the dash? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not Dash Rendar I've eaten, I've eaten it, on the jet. I've eaten it his diner. It's amazing. Is that Con Click a check? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it sure looks like him. Yeah, um, I know, right? <laughs> uh, Chodder fan. Uh, this is Rash Dendar's shit. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, okay. What's the word? <laughs> so the the four advantage is this, but, that I don't destroy the ship on the way out the door. Yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe the ship, the ship lifts off. It starts flying away from the, from the parking structure, the docking Sc- structure. Scraping. And then there's some hitches and the ship dips a little bit in the air and like the back end drops a bit. And, you know, there's a puff Wee. of smoke from something. And then I reach bit. over and I pull the post-it note that's on the dashboard off and I flip it right side up and we try again. <laughs> oh, it was... Absolutely. Yes, yes, without the oops. It wasn't on. It meant no. <sighs> All right, let's go find Sixer. episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. You can find me on Twitter at LeslitGS. You can find me on Twitter at LoserMLW, and you can also find me on the Redemption Podcast at Redemption Pod. You can find me at T-O-T-O-R-F-F-G on Twitter and TalesTheAdrim.com and TalesTheAdrim Podcast. And you can find me at AKA Agent Shades on Twitter and uh, Agent Shades on YouTube. And we're all at thehydeanway.com, where you can find previous episodes. You can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We're also on Facebook as The Hydean Way. You can holocom us at heroes at com. If you like what we do and want to support the show, you could find us at patreon.com slash the Hydean way. Or you can send this. <laughs> you can talk. <clears throat> nah. Or you can send the scene. Oh, this isn't even a hard it. line to say. I love you, it. you got this. You got this. Or you can send the team some calf at ko-fi.com slash the Hydean way. Or you can send us some cred so we can penny the door shut again. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And I am Leslie and I use she, her pronouns. I am playing teeth. I'm Michael using he, him pronouns and I am playing Dusk. And I'm David. I use. Sorry, what? Uh, so, uh, uh, hi, I'm Zach. I'm playing Kurt Rosal the Slicer. And I'm David, and I step on lines. 
Good job, oh, Mr. David Pickering. I use he, him pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and I'm David. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Bird Loxy. Cough. Mike getting it. Cough. Dee, 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 dee. Alexa, how many destiny points do we have? <laughs> you have two light side and three dark side. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know that one. <laughs> Would you like to access the destiny pool? <laughs> As I would normally do. No, thank you, Alexa. I found this online. <laughs> destiny 2 is a multi- <laughs> <laughs> yes. computer. They're a very rare species uh, native to Celest only. Yeah, they're used, they're used as they currency. They used to use them as currency. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they round them up. They're all fuzzy. They're oh, really now they're tribbles. Oh, no. <laughs> this, this just got really dark. <laughs> the lava flow on the planet is actually an after effect of the attempts to eradicate them. Celest <laughs> <laughs> um, is a the, post apocalyptic wasteland the, <laughs> of the tribbles. No, when, no, when they stop the falls, the only thing left at the bottom of the falls oh, are the tribbles. Still oh there, <laughs> multiplying. Still there. <laughs> All right. So anyway, back to focus. Sorry. Um, dee, 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 dee. This reminds me of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> I always wanted to watch that oh. show, but I never was able to bring myself to try. Dee, 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 dee. Three blank positive dice. That is insane. No, that's <laughs> standard. <laughs> I think you guys have made your dice bot mad. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Insert droid beeps here. Uh, mouse droids. Which ones are the mouse droids? Are the ones that go. Uh, pur, 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 pur. It's the I'm Power Rangers? <laughs> the only <laughs> ones I ever remember is like when they are surprised and they have like a little squeal and then they roll away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When there Chewbacca exactly. growls at it. I am kind of thinking of. All right, ship picks. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ship porn. Oh, Ooh. nice. Was that a, was it, YT, what, 900 or something? Uh, 1760. Wow. Never. It's never a 1930. <laughs> I like This is that. as close to a 1930 as you get. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. You know me. <laughs> Don't... Corellia just makes them, just makes them great. You know, those things last forever, beat up or not. Yeah. Well, the other part to this one is that this one's fast. Yeah. Okay. Valid. 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 Yeah. Mostly engine. <laughs> All right. Pretty much. It has two engines and a weird place for a docking port. They so... call that the dongle. <laughs> <laughs> <Why even? laughs> Sorry. Um, so we're rocking up. It's a fun to... word to say. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Okay. Focus, Leslie. Okay, we're good. We're good. I'm back. I'm back. Leslie. I'm back. Hello there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as as I said in our little chat, this is Star Wars, and it's not uncommon for you know uh, contractors and civilian yeah. employees to just be expendable, you know, expendable in whatever mission the rebellion or the yeah, no. empire has. We're we're a to couple be fair, of moves. A lot of contractors know what they're doing. Oh, we're but... getting into the the clerks yeah. discussion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I speak from the contractor side. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. 